physical therapy is not just exercise, although that can be really important. But, yeah. <clears throat> exercise is, is a key piece. And if you feel good in your body, it feels good to move. But if you don't feel good in your body, it's really hard to motivate to move. And mm -hmm. so a lot of what we do is focus on um, addressing the barriers to the movement dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So that could be a stiff joint or a hypertonic muscle or an inflamed uh, joint capsule or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I can address those and then, and then train better biomechanics, better movement patterns, things that distribute load across multiple joints instead of all focused on one. Mm -hmm. And so moving, learning how to move well, I call it training because it's kind of neuromuscular re-education. It's not necessarily, we're gonna build up your rotator cuff, yeah, but gonna we're, gonna, we're gonna show you how to hold your shoulder girdle into an optimal yeah. position so that you can reach up and not get impingement. Perfect. So, so it's, not, it's a lot more than just um, lifting weights. And that's probably one of the things that I would, I would want the public to know mm -hmm. is that uh, physical therapy is, in orthopedic outpatient is, is just way more than just exercise and get strong and lift weights. So you were really touching upon what specifically physical therapy can do for patients with arthritis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you and I both know, arthritis is an umbrella term for over like mm -hmm. 100 different conditions that yeah. can cause joint inflammation. But can you give a little bit more detail about maybe yeah, what, physical, what a physical therapy session might look like and what you'd be doing with someone mm -hmm. with maybe the inflammatory type mm -hmm. of arthritis mm -hmm. and then maybe one example for, on like osteo or sure. different type. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I always begin with um, an, an, a connection, so yeah. I, I, I connect with them, and then I, I usually do a postural assessment because I think your alignment is hugely yeah. important. I keep, if you notice me <laughs> this whole interview, I keep like re-educating my posture. Like, oh. Cue it up. Cue it yeah. up. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so we look at the posture and we get some baseline values. So how far can you turn your neck? How heavy is your arm? Mm -hmm. How do you, how does it feel? How do, how are you? experiencing your body. Mm -hmm. Then I'll go in and I'll try to address specific impairments which I think are leading to that experience. Mm -hmm. So um, that could be if it's an inflamed joint, it could be doing some sort of modality to bring down inflammation. It could be addressing mm -hmm. some abnormal or non-optimal load on the on the joint that's causing mm -hmm. it to perpetuate like a tight muscle or mm -hmm. an asymmetrical pull on it or a shear on the on the joint. So I'll address those hyper tonic muscles or hyper too much tonic gripping say, tone. Yeah. It, it, it's a partial state of resting contraction. So when we have injury and we have inflammation, muscles guard, they splint. Mm -hmm. And that's okay in the initial stage. Yeah. Like you're supposed to splint it and let it go through this process. But ongoing inflammation, as you know, is disruptive. It's, mm -hmm. it, it can be, it could be uh, degenerative. And so getting that inflammation to head down is, is key. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to also illustrate that, that we don't just treat the pain generator, that we're also looking at the relationship of different parts of their bodies and how that could contribute to the perpetuation of pain. So a good physical therapist that really sees the whole function of the body is, is really um, a, a golden asset. So it'd be like, okay, I know that you have, let's just say shoulder impingement. So you lift it up and it pinches and your rotator cuff is getting wear and tear. But, but is that because of the rotator cuff itself? or is that because of how your shoulder girdle is held because of a thoracic dysfunction? Mm -hmm. Or is that because you don't know how to hold it? Mm -hmm. Or is it been gripped and held for so long that you, you don't have options of movement? You've lost options of movement and the only way you can move is through the glenohumeral joint, the ball and socket joint, instead of the contribution of your scapula and the, the whole shoulder girdle and the thorax. So, so a good physical therapist will look at what we call regional interdependence. Mm -hmm. How are things connected? How are they influencing each other and, and move down that road? So I'm curious for other you know, chronic illness, chronic pain patients out there who might be uh, trying to find a good physical therapist who'd be a good fit for them, what do you recommend that they look for in terms of a bio or like, you know, certifications or buzzwords? Yeah. So I think, I think choosing a clinic is important. Mm -hmm. So choose a clinic which is accessible for you. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not so far that you have to be, you know, if you had low back pain driving for an hour yeah, in the car, yeah. which could aggravate it on the there and back. So finding a, a geographic location that works for you, finding a clinic that has a practice 
practice model that works for you. Mm -hmm. We're one-on-one -on -one for an hour, but if you had something that was one-on-one -on -one for 45 minutes or something, I, th I still think you could be really productive with that. Mm -hmm. In terms of finding a physical therapist, um, I really believe that uh, the credentials behind their name does illustrate that they're that they're passionate about continued learning. Mm -hmm. It's one of these things where you could graduate from PT school, you could close a curtain, and then you could you could practice that same way your whole life. Mm -hmm. But but people that go after continuing education, generally speaking, are people that are interested in learning and they want to get right. better. Yes. And so I I hold value in the credentials mm -hmm. in the accolades after, but. Um, most importantly, you have to be able to connect to your physical therapist. You have to have trust. You, you have to know that they care. And so um, I think that's the most important thing. More than number of years of experience is how much does this person understand me as a person? How much are they putting themselves out to really honestly help me? And, and that's and what I'd be looking for. So when you meet face to face, I mm -hmm. guess, and you get that sense of yeah. a good fit, I yeah. think I think you do. I think if if they're asking questions that are just solely about your pain, so mm -hmm. tell me about your shoulder pain and describe it and is it sharp or is it this versus someone that goes, "Hey, tell me about who you are in your life. Like like what are your goals? Like where are we going with this?" And mm -hmm. a really thorough history. I've had histories that were the entire hour because they're incredibly complex. And at that time, that was their that was the treatment. Patients say, "No no physician listened to me that long and really understood me and, and so I think that's um, that's important to be to be good a good listener and and uh, and take a good history yeah that I remember that because so dr. Brett took um, my initial evaluation and oversaw my care after my car accident and a bunch of other things that kind of got uh, whack-a-mole all, all the moles <laughs> came up with my health issues <clears throat> all at once in one year. so um that I remember that feeling of being like, this person's really present, really listening to me, not just kind of putting numbers into a chart and being like, oh, she's at a six out of 10 in pain versus, yeah, what you're talking yeah. about, more holistic yeah. and really patient-centered. Yeah. When, so. when I teach and uh, in, in teaching a connection with uh, physical therapists or fellowship students that are, are, are going through, um, I say you really have to ask two questions. You have to a ask a question that is in the cognitive domain. Mm -hmm. So like, why do you think this is actually oh, perpetuating? Oh yeah, asking me that. Yes. Oh, you want to know my theory? Well, yes. I have some theory. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> okay, so and, and I need to know that because those can be those can be facilitators or those can be barriers to your rehab. And and understanding mm -hmm. that is like super important to me. So someone that you know, oh, I have arthritis, and they have this vision in their mind that it's 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 degenerative and it's just going to continue down this path. That's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. um, and then that could be at that time it could be a barrier, but then changing that paradigm, it actually could be a facilitator like that if you do these things yeah. then yeah. perhaps we can work together and we can get you better the other question is I think they have to understand how it's emotionally impacting you and so how of how a PT phrases that is is up to their own personal communication style mm -hmm. but oftentimes I'll just I'll, I'll illustrate I'll just say wow you know Cheryl you're 30 something years old and this has really impacted you and your family and I just really want to know you know how how that's uh, playing a role in your life and and yeah, so so validating even just that question itself yeah. as a patient it's really validating Great. to hear you know so so yeah I mean and I don't want to set too high a bar hopefully all the physical therapists out there are as amazing as Dr. Brett but even if they're not I'm sure everyone has their own <laughs> their own benefits after you hit record. <laughs> that <laughs> okay, helps. So we'll start with, um, you were just talking about, what were you just talking about? Um, <laughs> we were talking about the chronic pain patients oh, yeah, chronic and pain. you were asking me yeah. how what how does a person with arthritis try to find a PT that, that yes. is gonna work and for them? Were, so maybe, I'll, I'll restate the question. 